Hi, I'm Michael Cashew. And I'm Adi Cashew, and you're listening to The WAG Podcast. This podcast is about health, wellness, and personal development. Each episode is a short conversation between Adi and I on a single topic with actionable steps. We cover everything from food, mindset, fitness, and relationships. We started WAG because of the way health and fitness changed our lives, so we hope to share a tool or two that helps you along your way. Hello. Hey. What's up, y'all? Thanks for joining us. Today, we are joined by Shai Cashew, <laughs> who is a little bit sick, so you're going to probably hear his sniffles. Bless yeah, you, buddy. bud. His sneezes, his farts. So he just, just uh, too, accept so there it. Might be some That's going to happen. Poop, poop, fart things. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. So today we're talking about a writing exercise, which essentially is like building your own success map. You know, one reason that it can be really powerful is that it can help you become aware of how you behave and the types of mindsets or the mindset that you have in a particular area when you're really, really crushing it. And it can help you avoid falling into the trap of feeling stuck, falling into bad habits. And if you have, if you get really clear about what it takes for you to be at your best, in times when you do struggle, you can either physically revisit this or just by going through this exercise, the next time you struggle, you're just going to, you're going to be more aware of what you need to do to get back on track. Yeah. Essentially you're trying to avoid the, when you're going through a hard time in life for this lasting longer and longer. And you want to be able to get out of those really hard times as quickly as possible. So this exercise is going to help you repeat what works really well for you and make it easier to just, you know, bad, hard times are going to happen no matter what. Mm -hmm. And this just helps us have a good mindset about it that works for us. Instead of just listening to other people, you can be your own it's like, your guru, yeah, your, your own, own guru. You're like kind of telling future you how to get out of tough situations. Mm-hmm. So you're your own therapist, essentially. So talk about how this came about with Kat. So working with Katrin David's daughter, two-time CrossFit Games champion. She is an incredibly successful, disciplined, amazing athlete and woman altogether. And she also goes through some hard times. So she was going through a harder period of the season. And we we had been trying to work on a bunch of different strategies for what could work well and how could we make things a little bit easier? How could we make training better, nutrition better, achieving goals easier, that type of thing. And then, you know, life started picking back up. And there was a period of time where she was just absolutely crushing it. I could tell every single time she would check in with me, there was so much positivity that was just oozing through the screen. She was so excited about life. She was so excited about training. All of her injuries were being managed, all sorts of things like that. And there was an opportunity for us to take stock of what was happening right then. So in that moment, I asked her to write down all of the things that she was doing, all of the ways that she was treating herself, all of the things that she was thinking, what is she doing in that period of time that's helping her have this level of success? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done a version of this quite often in my journaling practice. And the first first time that this had a big impact on me, uh, you know this story, Adi, I was revisiting some really old journals and then I saw this pattern emerge of let's say seven years ago, I went through this period of time of being depressed and anxious. And then right after that period, um, I wrote, I'm happiest when I meditate 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes every day. And then fast forward another like three years and I went through the same thing. I stopped meditating and I got depressed and anxious again. And, you know, my life was a little bit out of order. And then I wrote in my journal, I'm happiest when I journal and meditate. And so to this day, like in the past two years, I've missed probably 2% of, of days of meditating. And it's because I was able to look back and see that pattern. And I just have obviously my own map of success. I have this one thing that I know makes me happier and more successful in yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, it's human nature too to forget things. It's probably to our benefit in a lot of scenarios. Like I just 
went through pregnancy and labor and delivery. And it's probably a good thing that I forget how painful that was and how difficult certain moments of that were so that we can have another one. Mm-hmm. And it's not, uh, it doesn't hold me back from doing that. Right. Um, or like from, oh, bless, bless you. you, bud. So it doesn't, I think for evolutionary purposes, that's probably a good thing. Like we don't remember, we forget pain really easily. We forget challenge really easily. We also forget things that we're doing well or things that serve us. Mm-hmm. And so this is an opportunity to limit the forgetting mm-hmm. where I, I do this all the time. I know I feel my best when I don't eat sugar. I know that. I know that I feel my best. But man, when I get stressed out in the moment, it makes me feel good. And mm-hmm. I forget that actually it's going to make me feel worse to have a bunch of sugar. So it was really helpful in this moment. And with working with Catherine specifically, the next time she went through a more difficult time, I said, hey, do you remember that we wrote that list of all the things that you were doing and thinking and feeling while you were while you were crushing it? Let's pull that back out mm-hmm. and revisit it. How many of those things are you doing right now and how many are you not doing anymore? And you can go through the list and be honest with yourself. Am I meditating? Am I journaling? Am I on top of my nutrition? Am I working out? Am I calling my mom every day? I don't know. Whatever it is that makes you feel awesome, it's a really like potent way to revisit that. Mm-hmm. And the reason that we recommend writing specifically is because when we're forced to externalize our own thinking, it sort of crystallizes and we remember it a little bit differently, it takes on like a different shape or a different uh, maybe importance in our mind. If we actually go through the process of writing something, we also might have different insights than if we're just trying to think about it. Rather than just getting caught in the same loop of thinking, we're able to really sit with things and expand on our thinking. Yeah, and you get to make sure you don't forget it. (laughs) Okay, so how to do this. Number one is pick an area of your life that you want to optimize. It can be your health, fitness, relationships, business, etc. And one thing that... One thing we definitely want to mention is this works best if it's in an area that you feel like you're currently already crushing it so that you just look around and you're like, what am I doing right now? It's way easier to remember when it's something that you're already doing. Yeah, I think humans are notorious for having poor memory of past events. We just, when looking at something in in the past, we just forget certain details. That's why we don't keep doing it because we kind of forget it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're crushing it right now, that's the best time to to write down the things that are going well. However, if you're not and you're going through a hard time and you want to take an opportunity to do this exercise, what I would highly, highly recommend that is really important to make this work if you're not going through an awesome time right now is to really take it seriously and set aside a long time. Don't just do quickly like, oh, when I'm my best, I eat this or exercise this time or do this type of exercise. Don't do it super quickly. Sit down, take some time to really genuinely think about it and think about things that may not be 100% obvious. Some things that I know make me feel really good are when I, you know, take a shower and clean my hair and I have my hair be, I don't wash my hair very often. So if I wash my hair right after I wash my hair, it's like the best few days is when, when my hair is super clean. when you go and get clean. your nails done. Yeah, when I go and get my nails done. And it might not be the most obvious thing that happens right away. Or when I read three pages or five pages of a fiction novel before I go to bed, I have the best sleep. Mm-hmm. And those are things that might not be super obvious, but if you take some time to really think about it and you get to your list and you feel like you've filled it up, make sure try and fill up two or three more things. Mm -hmm. Two or three more after you feel like you've already done. So number one is to pick the area that you really want to optimize. Number two is to write as much as you can remember about what you were or currently are doing that made you or is currently making you successful. So some things like, like some prompts or questions could be what positive habits do you have right now or did you have? What bad habits did you not have or do you not have that other times you might have? Who were you surrounded by? Our environment or the people in it are so, so important. So who were you surrounded by? And then what environment 
were you in or are you in? Is there, are, are you in a different state? Are you in a different home? Um, write about your environment. Yeah. Are you spending more or less time in certain spaces? That type of thing. More time So outside? just write out everything that you can think about. And like Adi said, really give yourself some time to think about the things that don't just immediately come to your head because that's that could be where the gold is. There could be some, some subtle things that you're doing differently that make all the difference. Yeah. And then the last thing would be to store this list in a place that's easily accessible. And so if you aren't where you want to be, you can look at this list and you can think about what is the thing that I can commit to right now that I'm not already committed to. Uh, and it, you can revisit that. Or if you're currently not in a great place, you can think about as you're creating your list, what is it that I can commit to right now that can head me back in a positive direction? And one kind of call to action for all of you listeners today If you feel like you're at your absolute peak in a certain area, then what small habit can you put in place today to take you to even the next level? If you're not, then what is the lead domino in your map back to success? So if you're not, go through the steps that we just outlined and pick the lead domino. So the the one part of that map that you know would have the biggest effect. We almost never recommend people all of a sudden try to adopt 10 new habits. Like if you're not doing almost anything on that map of success, don't just try to do them all. Pick one thing that you know you can do every single day and then the rest become easier and kind of like a bonus. And over time you can add more. So what is the lead domino that you can do and stay consistent with to get back on that map? Yes. This is a super useful tool. I hope it's useful to you as well and that you take it seriously. All right, y'all. Peace. Thanks for joining us. Stay in touch by signing up for our newsletter at workingagainstgravity.com or on Instagram at workingagainstgravity. And don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, and refer a friend. We'll be back next week with another episode. Talk to you then.